someone who fought against American troops. What was it like? My father was fighting for the Viet Cong. My father didn't tell me much of what he thought of the American troops, only that it wasn't a war against Americans as a people, but a war against their ideology, or rather a fight to defend their own, which the Americans attempted to remove. He said it was never a fight about winning or the chances of winning, it was a war for ideology and ideologies go beyond individual human lives. He told me the first time they attacked, the thunder of the bombs could be heard from miles away, and the earth shook. We had not seen the planes, but we knew it was the Americans. For only Americans had access to those kinds of bombs, my father thought, and never before had they fought against an enemy with that many bombs. Otherwise, he never told me if he killed anyone, only that he only saw an American twice. Once they shot at each other, the other they talked. He got sick of dysentery and was moved to hospital, where he fell in love with my mother, who was an aid worker from Sweden. He quit war and moved there with her, but it took him many years to lose his ideological fervor. I recently went to the D-Day Memorial in Bedford. Really cool. Go see it if you can. Part of their display is a beach scene with a wall depicting soldiers climbing the wall and being shot on the beach. The tour takes you up to the top where there is a nice view of the whole area. Anyway, while I was up there looking back down on the beach scene with the tour group, there was an old man looking down and crying. The tour guide asked the man if he was all right. Probably not an uncommon scene for him. He asked if he had been a soldier who fought the invasion of Normandy. The old man said, no, I was up here shooting at them. My dad has always been interested in military history. One evening at a professional dinner for engineers, he found out that two people at his table were World War II veterans. They were happy to chat about their experiences. One of them had served with the U.S. Third Army, General Patton's army, in their advance across Western Europe. The other had served with a German army defending central France. The discussion happened to turn to a certain town, then to a certain day, then to a certain bridge over a certain stream. It got real quiet at the rest of the table as each of the two veterans got real stony-faced at each other, then both said in very level, almost quiet tones, You tried to kill me, you son of a bitch. Fifteen years ago, I was at a dinner with church folks at John's house. Hans was there. Both of them were old. We were having drinks and Hans noticed that John had been a bomber pilot in Europe in World War II. Did you ever have a mission at? Hans asked. I forget the name of the city in Germany. I want to say Leipzig, but honestly, can't recall. Let's go look, John says, and he leads Hans to a framed piece of paper showing all of John's missions. Turns out he had bombed that city, and it was during the time Hans was serving as a German anti-aircraft gunner there. They proceeded to talk about that day for five, maybe ten minutes. The conversation ended with John saying, I'm glad I didn't kill you, and Hans saying, I'm glad I didn't kill you too. It was one of the more surreal conversations I have ever overheard. I used to work at a military museum, and we always had a lot of vets come in and look around. We had one man who would come in once every few months and stand in front of a gun and just look at it. One day, I decided to ask if everything was okay. He said he was a machine gunner in the war and this was the same gun he used. He started talking for about 20 minutes. I just listened as he talked about what he did and how he viewed it as just what needed to be done. He said he never had any animosity towards the Germans and found most of them would have been friends if they hadn't been shooting at each other. Then he pulled out a picture of a German soldier from his wallet and said, except this son of a bitch, I hate him. He shot my best friend while he laid wounded in the street. I shot at and shot many Germans, but this was the only one I killed. He wiped tears from his eyes, kept talking a bit longer, and left. Never even found out his name and only saw him a few more times after this. Yet it since there seemed to be some confusion. The picture he pulled out of his wallet was the German soldier in question. It looked to have been pulled off paper, so most likely from a soul book, but since I wasn't there, I can't be 100%. And he didn't offer the info, and I wasn't about to jump in and go, hey, where did you get the picture? My grandparents fought in World War II on the German side, as did most German grandparents, and one of them was a panzer operator at D-Day. 
When my sister was in kindergarten in the US, my grandpa went to a Veterans Day lunch kind of thing with her because fuck it. He wants to hang out with his granddaughter since he was visiting from Germany and didn't get to see us as often as he would like. During an assembly, they asked all the veterans to stand up for recognition. My grandpa decided to stay seated until my sister blurted out, weren't you in the army, grandpa? So the people sitting next to us and the surrounding veterans urged him to stand up and he received a round of applause for his sacrifice in defending the American way. At this point, some people had caught on, but not everyone at the school knew my family. Later on, one of the other grandparents asked him where he had fought in World War II. My grandpa opened his mouth and in a thick German accent says Normandy, to which the other gentleman responds, me too. They then had a short discussion about how shitty war is and that they are happy they didn't shoot each other. To this day, they send each other postcards and they attended each other's wives' funerals. Thank you for watching. Watch the next video and subscribe for more Reddit stories.